Are you one of the hundreds of people that will be in Tavistock, Ontario this Saturday, June the 3rd, 2023 for the World Crokinole Championships? If yes, you may want to take in this video. There's important details here about the flow of the day. Now we are not going to go through the itemized agenda of what's going to happen at every moment throughout the day, but if you're the type of person who likes to know that, you will be able to find a link in the description box below that goes through each of those details. This is just going to be the, the flow of the day. So this will be a especially valuable for you if you're a first timer. My name is Jeremy Tracy of Tracy Boards. We are very, very proud to be the official board builders of the World Crokinole Championships. And what that means is every board you see there that has the World Crokinole Championship emblem on it was either built by our mentor, Willard Martin, or us at Tracy Boards. The one specific time that we will cover here is the registration time. It is very, very important that you arrive at the registration desk between 7.15 and 8 a.m. The registration desk will close at 8 a.m. If I were you, I would highly recommend arriving somewhere between 7.14 and 7.16, give or take. When you arrive at the Tavistock Arena, you're just going to walk in the front door, walk through a bit of a lobby area, and out onto the arena floor, and behold, one of the greatest crokinole experiences you'll ever see in your life. One end to the other of crokinole boards. Once you recover from the shock and overwhelm of that, you're going to want to turn to your right. You'll walk past our raffle table then I believe Crokinole Depot will have a display table there. The next table you will find is the registration table. It is very important that you go there. You need to get registered and pick up your name tag. That name tag has very important information on it that will help. It has what division you're in, in for doubles and singles or, or what you're playing in. It helps volunteers direct you and make sure you end up in the right area throughout the day. Once you are registered and have your name tag, I would then encourage you to go get some practice shots in and meet some of the greatest people on earth playing Crokinole. You don't have to, but it's probably best if you go to the area where you'll be competing that day. If you look at this map, you'll see that we have a, a queue section, and then after that there's the competitive play area, and then toward the back of the arena is the recreational play area. So whatever area is appropriate for you for doubles in the morning, I'd encourage you to go practice there. Now, it is important to note that there is a roped off area for each of these divisions. There is absolutely no food or drink allowed inside of those roped areas. It's for the safety of the boards, the safety of the competitors, just, just don't take any food or drink in there. At some point, there will be an announcement that asks you to please remove yourself from that playing area. It is very important that everyone gets up and leaves that area. Doesn't matter how good you are, how important you think you are, you must leave leave the area, at which point it will just make life easiest if you collect in an area that makes sense for your division. Hughes players, it makes the most sense for you to collect right around there, right around the registration desk, the merchandise tables, in that general area. The competitive players, I'd encourage you to collect around the entrance to the competitive area. Pretty, pretty clever, right? So somewhere in front of the NCA table, there's also going to be a table along that wall that is uh, John from the World Crokinole Championship Committee, as well as Tracy Boards has a table set up there. So that is the general area you'll want to collect in. It's just going to make things easier as we start to file in. Now the recreational division, I would encourage you to stand somewhere between the entrance to the competitive area all the way over to the entrance to the rec and you'll also see there, there's a couple of tunnels there that go back to the dressing rooms. There's lots of area there for people to collect. It just makes the next step in the process go easier. What's going to happen at some point they will announce, okay, you can enter now. As you do, a referee will be standing there and as you come in, you must collect a piece of paper out of, they'll have it in a bowl or a bag or something that you can't see. You need to reach in there. That piece of paper will indicate to you what table you should go sit at and I believe what side of that table you should go sit at. That is how we get our seating arranged to start the day. Now if there's uh, if there's some empty chairs the referees may uh, may need to shuffle people just to get things started smoothly so nobody's sitting there across from an empty chair. But that's generally how we get it started. Now the goal is to get things started by 8.15. If you have any questions or curiosities about how 
how a round robin works because this uh, the the doubles will be an eight game round robin in the morning in the afternoon it'll be a 10 game round robin if you have any questions or curiosities about that we do have a link down below we did a separate video about how round robins works pretty basic but if you've never done it you may want to check that out we also have a video put the link down below that explains exactly how to fill out your scorecard if you've never done this before you'd like a refresher I'd encourage you to check that out you'll just be more confident and comfortable going into your day once everything's settled there'll be some opening announcements we've got a great MC again by the name of Crokinole Joe he travels in uh, volunteers his day to help us out and keep the day running smoothly then the moment you've all been waiting for we get started with our initial round robin of eight games of play you will play the entirety of your eight games following the instructions of how to move from one competitor to the next once that is done I beg of you please very carefully add up your scorecards once those scorecards are all collected you've got some time it takes the tabulators a while to reconcile all those and figure out who is going to be moving on to the next round of play and you may be saying well, what should I do Jeremy great question glad you asked what a fantastic time for you to go and visit the raffle table there are some amazing sponsors who've chipped in some great prizes that you are able to buy raffle tickets for your chance to win one of the most important things that you could do there are so many amazing volunteers that have help make this day incredible uh, the, the other night I was down in Tavistock and I met the referees committee there's a group of referees that have taken their day to oversee and just keep things running smoothly if you have a chance to go give one of them a thank you please do that the committee members um, I sit on that committee but there are some there are some amazing people people they're not even competitive crokinole players they're just people who give their time their energy to make this incredible day awesome for you to come experience so if you have a chance please thank them another one that you could thank would be the score tabulators but not while they're tabulating the scores I know you're gonna be excited to see the results but please leave them alone give them their space let them do their job people asking is just going to slow things down that's what you can do to fill that time until you wait for the exciting announcement of who plays in the next round. The top six double team in each division will be playing in an A pool round robin. The next six, so teams that place from seven to 12th, will be playing in another six pool, six game round robin. If you are skilled enough that you're one of those teams, you're gonna get to enjoy another full round robin, five more games. If not, you can hang out with your friends, play some casual games, or watch some of the greatest game on earth. Once those rounds Round robins are done it is time for lunch you can head upstairs there will be a, a cash lunch up there the the arena canteen is also open there are also some local businesses where you could go grab yourself a bite to eat lunch will be approximately 12 45 to 1 45 at which point the announcements will be made who are the winners who are the world champions in each of the divisions of the day if you happen to be someone who didn't play the doubles or isn't planning on playing the doubles in the morning or playing the singles in the afternoon, don't worry. The registration desk will be open again through lunch. I believe it's 12.45 until 2, but if you're worried about that, please check the, uh, please check the schedule in the link below. Now, the afternoon is very, very similar to the morning in that you're welcome to warm up over lunch. Um, then at some point, people will be asked to leave their area. Please stand again somewhere near the entrance to your, your specific area. Area. you will file in same process you pick a card that will tell you where to sit what side to sit on and that is how the round robin will get started now the afternoon is a little, just slightly different in that you play a 10 game round robin it means you get to play a full four rounds four round match against 10 different competitors at which point the scorecards will be collected up go over to those lovely tabulators that help keep us on track but again please please make sure your card is as accurate as possible it makes their job faster easier more pleasant at this point the top 16 in each division will move on it will be uh, it gets split into two pools of eight who will then do a full round robin and then the top two move out of each division to finally whittle us down to discover who is this year's world crokinole champion getting just slightly more specific after that pool that uh, top 16 playoff the two pools of eight that will be a full round robin after that happens there will be a supper break that's a chance to grab your supper and uh, if you're done playing for the day you don't need to stick around but i highly recommend you do you'll be able to it'll give you the opportunity to watch the best of the best that day duke it out to see who's crowned so at which point there'll be the the top four in each division there'll be a semi-final 
final and a final in each division. And that rounds out the day. That concludes what is an awesome marathon of Crokinole. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope that the, the information just, just has you feeling a little more confident and comfortable what the flow is going to be like. Maybe it'll, uh, it'll mean less questions for the volunteer. Just help everything run more smoothly. So the number one rule, like I always say, is that uh, for the day and for any day that involves Crokinole is to make sure that you have fun playing the greatest game on earth. Ah, I think the first one's better. At which point all of those scorecards are going to be collected, taken to the score table, the score keeper's table, the score tabulator's table, they'll be taken. The, we'll have the entrance, which is kind of cool. So go, uh, you know, um, 